here. As soon as the wind scatters the fog, our target will present itself. We are looking for a goshawk, a proud bird of prey, with a wide wingspan and a long tail. This majestic bird is recognized by its white abdomen and grayish brown striped plumage, as well as its distinctive white eyebrow. This one is in Korea, but goshawks are common across the Eurasian landmass and in North America. Now is a harsh time of hunger and cold. Food is desperately scarce. Patiently, it searches for its next meal. When it spots its prey, it launches a sudden attack. This is where its talents lie. The Goshawk is a skilled and focused hunter. It aims for its target with speed and precision. It spots food at the edge of the forest. It kicks the pheasant up into the air. Though the injured prey is about to die from internal bleeding, it doesn't stop resisting. Such behavior cannot be explained just by the power of survival. As the ghost hawk alternates between feast and famine, the winter grows colder. It's a clear day, something of a rarity here. A soft breeze is blowing. This Korean red squirrel that has managed to survive the winter is now in danger. Goshawks are excellent hunters, operating their talons with precision. The squirrel was taken completely by surprise. The Goshawk looks like it is giving up, but its facial expression may not tell all. The squirrel has escaped death for now, and now plots an escape.
But it is then that the Goshawk soars into battle. The blow has caused the skilled tree climber to lose its balance. Though they are known for their predatory skills, the Goshawk boasts a success rate of only two or three successful hunts out of ten tries, even when at the top of their game. Although the food was captured in the air, the Goshawk comes down to earth to finish off and consume its prey. With its sharp talons and bill, it shreds apart its meal. Due to their tremendous speed and fearless disposition, Gosaks have long been used by humans in pheasant hunting. Before dawn, a sudden shrill sound awakens the entire mountain. Mating season lasts from March to April. But right before sunrise, all becomes quiet. For goshawks, mating and nesting take place at the same time. The building blocks of the nest are leaves and twigs. This home is one meter across and usually located about 10 meters above the ground. Gosaks typically build their nests in pine trees or certain deciduous trees. The nest looks like an island floating in the sky. The male and female take turns bringing materials home. The female is about 60 centimeters in length, about 10 centimeters larger than the male. When they're together, the difference is clear. Predatory birds typically feed on large animals, so the bigger their prey, the more substantial the size difference between male and female. A break from nest building provides an opportunity to mate. Their springtime is a busy period that alternates between work and love. The male lifts one foot and shakes its feathers. It must be feeling good right now. The female has to do more work building the nest alone.
The male doesn't seem to want to help her. She gives her perplexed mate a good scolding. He stands still and just watches her. Even with Gozox, relationships are fraught with difficulty. Once the male gets back to work, the angry female can relax. They haven't forgotten why they are building their nest on such a high branch. Predatory birds typically have one mate each year. There are cases where the same partners are kept for several years. Maintaining a nest together calls for them to overcome many obstacles. Springtime is ephemeral. The vernal bloom eventually gives way to summer. itself changes. The face of the forest is altered. Time flies. It flies away on the wind. It is the law of nature that things brought into this world will eventually disappear. This cycle is a function of time. Gosox live in this land with an understanding of the power of the wind and time. It is now mid-April. The forest is a lush green. The female is still hatching her eggs. Her young are arriving a bit later than other birds. They went about building their nest with such verve, but now they look peaceful as they focus on the task of hatching eggs. Gosox typically produce three to five young each time they breed. The eggs are a bit smaller than chicken eggs. After 36 to 38 days, they'll hatch. Like many other birds of prey, Gosox perform distinct gender roles at this time of year. Males go out and hunt while the females sit on the eggs. Sometimes they'll switch. Sitting on the nest is not the most exciting task. 
This is the only time when the birds are grounded. A particularly brave squirrel closely approaches. He knows that the mother cannot leave her nest. She has to set aside her hunting instincts for the good of her brood. Her primary task in the nest is rolling the eggs. This is done to ensure they warm evenly. It is time to switch jobs. Neither the female nor the male can escape from the nest. Enduring this boredom is an important task for their species in order to raise their hatchlings. This couple knows this is the secret to survival in this harsh world. Meanwhile, a great spotted woodpecker is busy using its beak to look for food. There's no time for birds to be sitting around like this. In nests all across the forest, hatchlings are anxiously awaiting their mother. A mother turtle dove regurgitates her food, nourishing her babies with a mixture of meat and acid. What looks like intensive fighting is actually one feeding the other. This is a gray-faced buzzard eagle. It is about 10 centimeters smaller than the gosok. They are migratory birds that simply pass through the area each spring and fall. They prefer to rest in the trees, but this is a busy season. Gray-faced buzzard eagles were thought to be transient visitors, but they actually stay here to raise their young. They feed on rats, small birds, snakes and frogs, things that are smaller than what gosoks typically eat. Most birds of prey shred food for their hatchlings, but by the time the young leave the nest, they are able to do this for themselves. Time flies when the neighbors are busy raising their young. The mother moves a bit. It has been one month and one week since she laid these eggs. They finally begin to hatch. While the eggs hatch, the mother must keep the nest warm. In order to clean the nest, she eats up the remnants of the shell. This is a good source of calcium. Already half a day has passed. It is a long time to do nothing but wait.
Finally, we see the hatchling. It is wet and confused. The mother seems agitated. She goes off to hunt for food for her young. She has cleanly cut up the food. It is ready to eat. She shreds it apart for her young. The fluffy hatchling is the first to get food from its mother. The male is soaring higher than usual. Only three of the eggs managed to hatch. The fourth didn't make it, despite the mother's intensive efforts these past weeks. They still need the warmth of their mother. She embraces her newly hatched offspring. A month to build the nest, and another to hatch the eggs. Time in the nest seems to go by quite slowly. The young have lost their fluffy first feathers and have sprouted mature, dark feathers. The mother must hunt twice a day to feed her young, once in the morning and again in the evening. The mother tries to distribute the food evenly, but the first hatched is quick and snatches it away. This leads to a difference in their growth rate. The first hatched one has darker feathers than the other two. His flapping is impressive. It is strong enough to shake the nest. The way they snatch up food shows that there is a hierarchy among them. The strongest eats first, and the others wait patiently. This cruel rule of the mighty is taught from early on. survival of the fittest has trained them this way. Outside the nest, the world is even more unfair. It can be a cruel and merciless place. The nest is engulfed in a state of slumber. It is like the calm before the storm.
The hatchling gray-faced buzzard eagles have grown so big, they fill their own nest. Their feathers are the same color as their mother's. She has caught a tiger keelback snake. The mother stays around the nest for a while, remaining on alert. The young show their interest in the meal. Birds are well known for their maternal instincts. The mother tears apart the prey for her nearly full-grown offspring. Their dominance at the top of the food chain means many things. How do birds of prey, known to be ferocious and strong, maintain their fierce reputation? The secret lies in their wings. It took humans a long time to discover their secret. When a bird flies, a twirling airstream is created around the wings because of their unique shape. This effect means that the air above the wings moves faster than that below the wings, lowering the air pressure above. At the same time, the air pressure beneath the wings rises and the birds are able to harness this difference in order to soar. It is from this that birds find the ability to fly. Birds create lift for flying by flapping their streamlined wings at regular rate in the air. Humans have long dreamed of the freedom of flight and sought to mimic this perfect flying machine. But the evolutionary process that gave them specialized wings means humans can never catch up. An open sea without any obstacles is home to a bird called the peregrine falcon. Its wings are long and narrow. Its nest is found somewhere in this cliff, in a well-hidden place. Its wings are as long as its tail, but its tail is not as long as that of the goshawk. Falcons like these are, like the goshawk, good hunters that have long been used in pheasant hunting. Their ability to spring into flight is formidable. Their flapping creates continuous lift. When it spots food, it plummets downward at speeds of up to 300 kilometers per hour. Falcons have a unique way of passing food to others. The female flies to where the male is. She positions her feet upward and catches the food that the male drops. Bird's wings have evolved differently, depending in part on what they eat and where they live. Unlike falcons, goshawks tend to hunt in forests, a place filled with obstacles. When hunting, birds of prey require something as important as their wings. It is their vision. Their eyes function like telephoto lenses, able to spot food as far as eight kilometers away. They quickly fly close to their food. They stretch out their talons and snatch up their prey in their claws.
It is truly amazing that the ghost ox can fly so quickly and smoothly through a complex forest like this without crashing into anything. The ghost ox have learned to use the wind while evolution shaped their specialized wings. When flying, they don't even hit a branch. This is all thanks to their tail. When a ghost ox needs to slow down, it fans out its tail. When it has to change direction, it uses its tail to guide its body. In flight, the wide tail functions both as a rudder and a brake. The ghost ox's ability to fold up its wings in an instant when passing through the small space between trees makes this bird of prey one of the most adept chasers in the forest. feet are used to control speed. In the blink of an eye, the claws may touch the trees in order to slow down or change direction. All these evolution honed skills are exploited in the instant a hunt begins. A successful predator must be faster than its food. They must try harder, more ambushes, and more failures. They must be more persistent than their food. It may have missed its mark several times, but in the end, it has succeeded. The strong have a tough will to survive. This is the essence of the ghost ox hunt. The ghost ox nest is quite crowded now. The young are still fighting over food. The strongest one shields the food with its wings in order to maintain dominance. The other two, again, wait their turn. These birds are all grown up, but still look different from their mother. In Korean, goshawks less than one year old are called porame. 
It is at this stage that they are the most fearless, even a little reckless. It is for this reason that the Purame, the Yango Sok, was chosen as the symbol of the South Korean Air Force Academy. Slowly but surely, the young begin to venture outside the nest. They typically begin to leave the nest about 40 days after hatching. For about two weeks, after that, they will mostly circle the nest. Other than curiosity and an adventurous spirit, what else would make them explore the world beyond their home? Their mother has brought home food. Gosaks do not search for their young if they find them gone upon return. Instead, she simply waits. There will soon be a time when her young never return to the nest. That is when her role as mother and caretaker will be over. The young will remain under their parents' influence until about one year after they leave the nest. The mother seems to be less busy than when she was occupied with child rearing. Gosaks need an area with a two kilometer diameter in order to build a nest. Having their own territory gives them the opportunity to build a nest. Their flying looks awkward. They need to build stronger wing muscles in order to leave the nest. A new wind blows from somewhere. It means that, like plush feathers, they must fly away. The wind is blowing from the northwest. Long ago, Gosox came to this land to live amidst this wind. It's significant that a bird of prey like the gosok can reside in the same place for four seasons. Among other things, it means that smaller creatures can also thrive in this land. The gosok enjoys the wind. A new wind is always blowing, yet it always feels familiar. Hunting is always a serious affair, as if being done for the last time. The gosok sinks its claws deep into its prey. The hapless creature is still breathing, so the gosok tries to tear it apart. Despite its abilities, gosoks have only about a 30% success rate when hunting. Those seven failures out of ten weigh heavily, more than the three it succeeds.
the wind blows and everything changes. The wind suggests time flowing by. Each season has its own special wind, a flow that carves out a different landscape. Birds migrate along the wind. This is a place often enshrouded with fog. As soon as the wind scatters the fog, the gosok will come. It is a porame. Its first winter is drawing near. The gosok will take on the challenges of life that come as the wind changes. Across its world, everything is quiet and still. For the majestic Gosak, the soul of the wind, it is a solemn moment indeed. <laughs> 